are back. It's Wednesday evening. It's weather for Weather Geeks time. Thanks to everyone who gave an opinion on my uh, backdrop. We're back to the drab office look, which some of you have indicated that you actually prefer. I'm still tweaking kind of the virtual camera setup to make it look a little bit better. Kind of hoping to get rid of this office look um, because while some of you enjoy kind of the behind the scenes uh, look, boy, it's just, to me it's just kind of an eyesore. And I think the background on these videos could be a little bit better, but I don't like how the virtual camera setup looks just yet. Anyway, on to the weather. What a winter this has been. Now, I want to do a little bit of uh, geeky meteorology here right off the top this evening. Our annual winter forecast, which we debuted in the middle of November, we updated in uh, mid-December. Uh, we used, uh, as we do every year, what we call analogs. Uh, past years that we think have a similar setup from the fall into the winter season as uh, the current year. And we do that for both temperatures and precipitation. What I'm uh, showing you here is the composite analog set of our uh, precipitation uh, outlook. So in other words, uh, you see a bunch of years listed up here. Some of these years we put uh, heavier emphasis on than others, but these were some of our best analogs we think for the uh, winter season. And uh, when you throw all those years together and get an average, this is the map you, you get when it comes to precipitation. This is all drier than average down here, wetter than average up here. So it's supposed to be wet in the Pacific Northwest. It's supposed to be dry in the southern tier of states, according to our analog package. Well, what's actually happened? Little hint before the graphic comes up. Not this. This year is behaving a little more like El Nino rather than La Nina. Of course, you know, if you follow the winter forecast, uh, we're in a La Nina winter for the third straight year, but this map more resembles El Nino because you've got all this wet weather in California and it's actually dry compared to the average in the Pacific Northwest so far. This is a map showing precipitation anomalies over the last 60 days, so this takes us back to kind of the middle of November, not technically winter, but you get the idea. It's been wet in California, dry in the Pacific Northwest, and look how much real estate in the southern tier of the U.S has actually been fairly wet over the last 60 days uh, during a La Nina. Typically, you see above average precipitation in El Nino in California and parts of the southern U.S. We've also kind of got this uh, dry splotch through here in parts of the uh, Ohio River Valley. Um, and this is an area that typically sees above average precipitation in La Nina. So again, this map kind of, we're fudging it a little bit because this goes back to mid-November, not really December 1st. but generally the idea holds true. Now compared to last year, snow, let's uh, zoom back out before we zoom into our local area. Same idea, we talked about this some last evening, it's been snowier than last year across parts of the upper Midwest, the Northern Plains, the Rocky Mountain states, of course the mountains of California. But then around here, while last year was not a big year for snowfall, especially during the first half of the year, or the season I should say, uh, we've had even less snow in most of our area compared to this same time last year. Some exceptions of course, the lake effect areas, and especially once you get up to the Buffalo area, where it's been just a ridiculous winter for snow so far. All right, so partly to blame, or mostly to blame, for this unusual La Nina pattern, um, and uh, meteorologist Andrew DiPaolo talked about this some on 21 News at 5 this evening, and you probably have heard terms thrown around on national news outlets and whatnot. Uh, bomb cyclones and atmospheric rivers, things like that, all these kind of you know, kind of geeky terms that uh, sound really dramatic and whatnot, but it's all part of the meteorological lexicon and always has been, kind of like polar vortex. But once the once the media gets a hold of these terms, they like to kind of beat them to death a little bit. But the idea is that you have this just sailing Pacific jet stream, um, an extended is what it's called, Pacific jet. Sometimes the Pacific jet gets fractured, it wobbles around a lot when it's kind of just a fire hose from west to east across the central Pacific, this brings in all sorts of stormy weather into the west coast of the US. And when you get this kind of a pattern, uh, you don't typically see cold making many inroads across the lower 48 states because the pattern is dominated by Pacific air rather than Arctic air. And that's what we've seen. And again, this is more common in, a, in an El Nino rather than a La Nina. All right, milder air is on the move. It's going to be a balmy night tonight. We're 12 degrees warmer in the 7 o'clock hour than we were last evening. Temperatures will bottom out for a few hours this evening and then actually start to rise later on tonight as a warm front heads our way. The first thing we'll see before we see kind of a changeable 48 hours or 36 hours, uh, the possibility 
anyway, that we'll get some fog uh, tomorrow morning. Our uh, in-house model here does not have it as widespread locally as just off to our west, but I think chances are about the same, actually, in our area as areas off to our west closer to Canton, of seeing some at least patchy fog tomorrow morning. Warmer, more moisture-laden air is pushing into the region. And at this time of the year, uh, with the low sun angles, sometimes that's going to mean some fog, and that could be the case tomorrow morning. It's also going to be an active day for severe weather to our south tomorrow. A uh, level 2 uh, out of 5, slight risk of severe weather out for a good chunk of Georgia and Alabama with the low-end risk extending up to the Ohio River. Uh, not expecting severe weather, of course, around here, but might there be a rumble of thunder before the day is through? That is a possibility. So the wettest part of our Thursday is going to be the afternoon. Some uh, spotty showers early with the fog, but then it's going to rain for a lot of the afternoon into the evening. And then that changeover from rain to snow will occur from northwest to southeast as we get into the mid to late evening tomorrow. Some of the last places to see the changeover will be in western PA, probably after midnight tomorrow night. Now snow showers are going to come and go throughout Friday. It's going to look like a snow globe at times across the area on Friday, but in our TV market this is going to be fairly low impact during the daylight hours. Now, it could be a different story not far to our north. Anyone traveling up 79 or up 11, heading up towards Ashtabula County, Crawford County, PA, Meadville, Erie, over to Ashtabula, over towards Geauga and Lake Counties, over towards the Cleveland area, um, by, by late tomorrow night into Friday morning, you're going to run into heftier snow amounts and lowered visibilities and maybe some more uh, uh, profound I mean, profound isn't the right word, but certainly some bigger inconveniences off to our north uh, during the daylight hours on Friday. But for us in our TV market, snow showers will come and go. Roads are going to be mostly wet through the mid-afternoon. Then I think there could be a, some slick spots trying to develop towards evening with some lingering snow showers and flurries around, temperatures dropping through the 20s, the loss of daylight. That's when I would be most concerned about some slick spots late in the day on Friday. Clouds will then break for some sunshine on our Saturday. Actual snow amounts, our expectations have not changed a whole lot since I showed you this map last evening. I think there will be a stripe of 6, 7, 8 inches, 10's pushing it, but maybe 6 or 7 inches uh, up in the primary snow belts. This will be more of a lake enhanced event rather than a pure lake effect event. Uh, in other words, Lake Erie will kind of give a boost to the snow showers up there, but it's not pure lake effect. Um, this snow would occur even without the presence of, of Lake Erie, but Lake Erie will give it a boost. So. There's going to be some places up here that might get a half a foot. Again, down in our TV viewing area, though, I think this is a coating to an inch or two, perhaps at most three in most of our area. A lot of this will be on the grass. Um, roads will be primarily wet for a lot of the day Friday. Again, use caution later in the day, kind of breaking this down hour by hour. Rain will change to snow as we go through uh, late Thursday night into Friday morning. By mid-afternoon, mid early afternoon on Friday, air temperatures are probably still right around freezing. Road temperatures are probably still above freezing. I would expect things to be just kind of damp and miserable, and snow showers will be around. But still, use caution. Uh, visibilities will be reduced at times. Notice the air temperature is starting to fall back into the 20s, though, as we head towards evening. Even though the snow will be tapering off at this point, and snow showers will be less numerous by 9 p.m. as earlier in the afternoon, with temperatures dropping back into the 20s and the loss of daylight, anything untreated could be a little bit slick. I look for things to be just fine in most spots by Saturday. It's going to be cold Saturday morning, and again, any, any untreated surfaces um, that aren't treated at all Friday night could stay pretty slick into Saturday morning. But actual snow falling on Saturday, nothing more than a stray flurry early in the day. Cold day. Uh, temperatures no higher than about 30 Saturday afternoon, despite a good deal of sun. We'll drop into the teens then Saturday night. All right. The beat goes on then in the 6-10 to 10 day outlook. Our little flirtation with winter is just a flirtation because it's a, uh, a lock, a cinch, that east of the Rockies, this 6-10 to 10 day period will be marked by warmer than average temperatures. I'm still kind of pinpointing or looking forward to the last week of January as being a different kind of a pattern, as harshly cold as Christmas. No, but colder, maybe just kind of back to where we should be at the tail end of January. Yes. Um, so this pattern will end eventually. That that uh, extended jet stream over the Pacific is going to start buckling, and the West Coast will get a break eventually. And when they get a break, the East will have their turn with colder, stormier weather. But it's going to take until that, about that last week of January. Thanks for watching this extended edition of Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. Let's do it again on Thursday.